Still a while. Okay. Boom, JT Marsh. I know. Boom, <laughs> JT Marsh. Hi, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to Josiah is Right. So I am back with Paul, and we are actually, our shirts are, are still themed, loosely themed, but themed. So Paul's shirt is a parody of a Pittsburgh thing, and my shirt is actually a Pittsburgh thing. So that's how we're staying on theme. Normally, we wear, we've worn our Iron Man shirts for these videos. But anyway, so today we're going to do our first and what will be a short series, or long series, we'll see how it goes, of toy lines we wished were still around or rebooted or brought back, however you want to put it, toy lines that we have nostalgia for that we think could be awesome today. So the first toy line is what, Paul? What are we going to talk about right now? Exo Squad. Exo Squad. So if you're a, a clever viewer, we'll notice right behind my shoulders here yeah. we have... JT Marsh. JT Marsh. Hence why we're talking about JT Marsh. Alec so, de Leon. <laughs> JT for Paul will grab JT uh, Marsh. No. But you can see here, these are my actual original well played with action figures. Uh, Before we talk about whatever it is we have to say, we're going to take a little bit of a look at the background of Exo Squad. Exo Squad was first conceived by creator Jeff Siegel in 1989 as he worked on Challenge of the Gobots. Jeff wanted to make more robot like stuff. They had a name Exo Force. Enter Playmates Toys in a trademark filing necessitating a name change, and Exo Squad was born. Exo Squad had a significant influence from executive producer Will Minio. He influenced both the design and the story. Minio puts it this way It's a common misconception that I created the show, when in fact there was plenty of development done by the time I signed on to do it. I hope to refine it, but the series' actual creator is Jeff Siegel. My contribution was in the designs of the characters and helping to make them internally consistent as the scripts came in. The concept of the show was tied largely to Jeff and my love of Japan, and the show's coming out of there. Story editor Michael Edens also played a significant role. So what was the story they created? In the future, humans have colonized Venus and Mars. Along with Earth, they're known as the home worlds. The harsh climates of Venus and Mars were tamed by genetically engineered super labor force called Neo Sapiens. Fifty years ago, the Neo Sapiens rebelled. However, they were defeated. The Universal Animation Studios produced series itself begins with Able Squad led by J.T. Marsh heading off into space to fight pirates. With the entire fleet gone, Phaeton, a Neo-Sapien leader, engages in a successful revolt. This time, the Neo-Sapiens control all three homeworlds. The conflict for the vast majority of the show's 52 brilliant episodes is the battle to get those homeworlds back. All of Able Squad and many of those secondary characters made up the most underrated toy line of the 1990s. The toys were made by Playmates, most famous for, of course, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which they are still most famous for and are still making. The Exo Squad toys were produced over six series from 1993 to 1996. First, the boxes were really cool, and the box art was spectacular with a painted movie poster style on each cover. The toys centered around the E-frames, which feature great playability. All those spring-loaded missiles were awesome, but also easy to lose. Each E-frame, or ship, came with a 3-inch pilot. These figures were smaller than a G.I. Joe, but featured an impressive amount of articulation for such a small figure. This articulation allowed them to believably pilot their E-frames. Later series include micro lines, jump troops, those freaky genetically engineered Neo Sapiens, weird stealth or water or transforming or animal, yes, animal versions of E frames, and eventually even Robotech. The Robotech toys didn't fit in with the E frames or were just smaller vehicles. There was also a single issue of a comic book from Tops. It wasn't even number one, it was number zero for some reason, and it reads much more like a promo for the series and the toys and things than a comic which allowed players to pilot some of the E-frames from the members of Able Squad. Ironically and sadly, the game came out after the series had been cancelled. The series was revolutionary. The characters were three-dimensional. The good guys weren't always totally good, and the bad guys certainly weren't always totally bad. And often, they were very much justified in their actions. The plot was deep, and the stakes were very real. Maybe a little too real, as the series ended after only two seasons. The show was shuffled all over the place, playing as early as 4am and eventually being paired with Monster Force, as part of the Universal Action Hour. The war against the Neo-Sapiens had actually been resolved, and the series featured a vague new alien threat. Rumors suggested that that threat was actually from the Robotech universe, although it is more likely that Playmates acquired the Robotech license due to the comparisons to Robotech with ExoSquad. There was talk of spin-offs or sequels, but the money didn't make sense and nothing ever came of it. So we're gonna first talk about, since we went through the history, uh, or at least a little bit of history, I'm sure there's more to say, but uh, we're gonna talk about what we had. So you can literally see here what I had. So I had oh, JT wow. Marsh. Boom. I had, <laughs> um, as it flies yeah. towards the camera. So I had yeah. JT Marsh, I had Alec DeLeon here, which, um, and I also had a few more which are on the shelf behind me and I will slide these guys up. Like Why not? Cause, the, yeah, 
How the wings come out? Yeah. I'll These are you. actually really cool. They're really cool. So yeah. I'll give you this guy too. Oh, okay. Is this so we have, like the foot that, soldier? That's, that's just like, yeah, the stormtrooper equivalent there. Yeah. And then I have Phaeton, the big bad guy. So they basically what I have here with these four is the first series. I have the original like first series. It was these four action figures. And um, in my own personal collecting, this was the first one that I had. I remember buying it. It was a big deal like the, the toy the, the boxes i remember were great because they had that flap that folded up so oh, it was yeah, like a box the and then you it was mm -hmm. you could see the figure inside there so then i next got phaeton as my first bad guy then i probably uh alec there or not alec uh, jt marsh and then the you know the random bad guy that in the cartoon there were a million of these that all <laughs> blown up basically and then the only other one I ever actually had as a kid, oh, actually there's a couple more, so is this ship one. I always wanted, was it um, Kaz Tanaka ship, right? There was an episode, oh, oh, the jet. there's an episode yeah. where he goes against like the best pilot for the Neo Sapiens. And this is the guy from that episode. I can't remember what it is, but uh, that guy who's like, the most deadly pilot for the Neo Sapiens. He's like this the Red was, Baron. Yeah, basically, he's like the, the Red Neo Baron Sapiens. the Neo Sapiens. And this was that ship, so I'll put these guys on. He's for a the second. purple Baron. Yeah, so this, <laughs> like, it's basically in, you know, sort of in combat mode. I have it here so it'll sit a little bit better on my desk. But this is like what it's like in combat mode. Um, and you can see here that these toys, they're missing missiles and stuff like that because I played with them through the years. Like, I probably have some of the missing things um, that they're they're missing stuff from play. Anything that you don't see here, it's because I was playing with it. So that's what happened. Um, but yeah, these are it's like, just check that out. Yeah, just, it's amazing. So, and I'll cut uh, to some other close-ups of these so you guys can see them. And then the last of what was the figures that I actually had was, you just set them back here, okay. were these guys here, which um, I'll just leave them back there because I don't want to drop the pieces. They were uh, what were called jump troops. So in the show, there were episodes about jump troops. Like, great, great show, by the way. Amazing, amazing show. And there were jump troops, which were like sort of like these less armored mini mech type things that the people went in and they were kind of like the Marines, I guess you could say. They were like the first in, they were the infantry or something. And that's what those guys were. So they're missing <clears throat> pieces of their armor, but cool action figures. There were, I think, four total in that line of that series. Well, they had two. And basically, as a kid, I probably bought them because they were cheaper than buying, you know, these guys. But, uh, that is what I had. So, well, Paul, what... You probably want to build your army, you know? Well, I did, but I mean, I would have I would have rather had a Bronski than you know, yeah. those guys, I'll say that. So, what did you have, Paul? What was in your collection? So, we don't oh. have... With the, and we don't have Paul's collection here with us, so I don't know if you still okay. have it. Okay, I stupidly sold all of my collection... Before I went to college. Yeah. So I sold I a lot totally of different toys it. from my childhood and things like that, but I did not sell my Exo Squad. So that's one line of toys I did not sell. So. Yeah. I uh, I was like, I need to grow up. I should sell my toys. <laughs> and the, I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah. I, I, For shame, Paul. I had uh, JT Marsh. Um, I had uh, Alec DeLeon um, right there. I had... Uh, not my broken one, but this one. Uh, Mars Marsalis? Marsalis. With, with the, I forget what the name of the girl is, but it was like a um, <laughs> bipedal kind of. Yeah, that was in a uh, two-seater. Yeah. yeah. So that was one that would have that been pretty That was pretty cool. dope. So. Uh, I also had uh, the, the uh, what was it, Kaz Tanaka? Kaz Tanaka and his ship, the, yeah, the like a, his rival here. Like So again, <clears> we have his rival, which I don't recall this guy's name, so. Yeah, um, and, then, and then Phaeton. It was, that's what I had. But, so we had some crossover, but between us we would have had a pretty good set because there was yeah. some, clearly we filled we filled some gaps for the other person. Like, and clearly we both had a lot from that initial line, which mm -hmm. I think part of why it didn't stick around is that it didn't sell beyond that point. I think that initial phase sold, and the cartoon obviously didn't last super long. Great, all time great cartoon, probably one of the best cartoons ever. But and between us, we had a pretty good set. And sadly forgotten. Uh, we didn't know each other as kids, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we just, yeah. Um, we didn't mean to we're old men talking about yeah, toys. Yeah, exactly. We're like, hey, remember Exo Squad? <laughs> Wasn't it awesome? Like that. Yeah. But yeah. more curmudgeonly. So. Yeah. Ugh. Like, whoa. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, no, I, I loved Exo Squad. I loved the show. It had, like, I remember one of the main characters died towards the end. Yeah. Uh, right as the, the war ended. Spoiler alert, it was this guy who uh, was my favorite 
in part because he was the first toy I bought. But he did die in the show, which was just shocking and insane. And they actually did clone him and bring him back. Oh. But it was, like, in the very, like... Again, sort of spoiler, like, the show runs its course. So the show starts before the Neo-Sapien War. And they actually, the Exosquad goes to battle pirates. And then they're, like, in prison for a year or something. And then they come out of prison... And during that time is when the Neo Sapien War happens, I think. And so then they're back in, you know, in battle. And then, um, then the whole course of that war goes, like through a season or two, however long the show was. And in that second season, that war ends. And there's a couple episodes mm -hmm. that then it would have been like whatever the next thing is, the next thing that that's out there. Um, and what happened was like that's when they cloned him, but he died. With the, the, those, those jump troops, I think they were jump troops, that's what they're called, or something like that, protecting the moon. Or, like, getting, like taking the moon, because then, like, they had to recapture Earth, but they had to take the moon. I mean, like, yeah. that's just, you know, this is, we're ten years old, or whatever. Yeah, it's very, like, That's adult, intense, you know, you but, know. and very dramatic, yeah. Like, it's, it's you know, this is Optimus Prime dying level stuff. Yeah. You know, we're in the show, so. And, um, like, I love the fact that, um... In the middle of the series, like the pirates actually joined. Yeah, the yeah, the exactly. So I mean, the original enemies become like what tips the balance of the war. So the pirates are like, be, like their base is like beyond Pluto or something. So mm -hmm. they they have to go and they send the Exo Squad to go like negotiate for them to join because that's the only way they can win this war. It's it's just. And then like the whole reason why Phaeton started the war is because he wanted freedom for the Neo Sapiens. You know, it was almost like, yeah, like the civil rights movement. No, exactly. Like, it was like it was, he's not totally the yeah, bad guy's not wrong. totally wrong. Yeah, it's like uh, his people were enslaved. They were they were basically meant built to be servants and that kind of thing. That yeah, it's again, it's like this a lot deeper stuff going on than just kids' cartoon kind of thing. And I love the fact that they had these all these adult themes, and they're they were trusting kids with this. You know, like. It was so much more complex than a lot of other cartoons out there. And it's like really in like the early 90s is like when they started doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, like, and, and you know, a lot of people who did this show did the X-Men cartoon from the 90s, the 92 X-Men cartoon, which is probably still the best adaptation of X-Men. There's some things that are funky with it, and the animation's obviously not super expensive. Um, yeah. You know, had to cut cost there. It's not like Batman the animated series quality animation. But the stories are really deep and their characterization is really good. Those kind of things are where they sort of, you know, put their money, if you will. And that's what you have with Exo Squad in a show. One thing I remember about watching it that was funny, it was always really hard back in the, the Pittsburgh area to find it. Like, at first it would be on, like, really early on Saturday mornings. Like, I'd have to get up at, like, 6 in the morning on a Saturday to watch the show. And then they put it on, like, the afternoons at, like... 5.30 on a random day. It was it was just all over the place. It was hard to find to watch it, for me at least. And, mm. and I would, like, do the effort. You know, this is before everything streaming and internet and all these things. And it wasn't easy to just find out when it was. You would have to, like, you know, read a paper TV guide if that was up to date or just figure it out. I It was, it was actually frustrating to find. It was one of those things where they just seem to bury that show, at least locally, for me, so. Yeah, I, I, well, at the time I lived in Sacramento, and um, it would usually show at about 7 a.m. Uh, before school, and so I would see an episode, but every once in a while they'd have, a, like, a, a, you know, two episodes, but then I had to go to school, and I was like, <laughs> uh, I think I'm sick, <laughs> actually. Uh, I but I love that show, though, and, and, you know, it's, like, over 20 years later, and, you know, we still bring it up. A lot of people... Um, I don't know why it's been kind of forgotten, you know? Uh, yeah, I'll say, so, like, I guess that kind of moves us into, um, you know, the next thing is why would we, why reboot this as, uh, and obviously here we're talking beyond just the toy line, you know, we're talking about reboot of toy line, this is beyond just the toy line, this is, you know, an opportunity for, I always, I, I remember in high school, I developed an outline for, a movie trilogy based on this. So I, I, my, and I roughly my movie trilogy, which we kind of talked about, was um, it outlined the first arc was battling the pirates. The second arc was sort of like the Empire Strikes Back, where it gets dark, where the Neo Sapien War takes everything over, and then the third one would be the humans winning back 
much of what you know Earth was. And this is before, well, it was kind of right before everything had to be a trilogy. Now everything has to be a trilogy. Um, no. Even like if it's solo, where it's like, yeah, we're gonna do a trilogy. Oh, maybe not because people didn't like it. But yeah, yeah. and that's not what it's about. So we're not gonna talk about that. But the point being is like that was my vision because it was just all laid out. It would make an amazing movie because it it was like we said it was more adult than contemporary cartoons. It was a more grown up show than other shows. Like, and that's what it was. But having said that, I think the real big thing here is the potential for rebooting really cool toys. So what do you think could the toy potential could be here? Oh, definitely. I mean, imagine having, like, these figures be, like, Star Wars Black scale. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine have, that? Like, this, like, yeah. Like, like the like, intricate mech suits. Yeah, and, like, a, you know, this is itself mm. is six inches, which is, you know, what you have, like, here's, like, a six inch, you know, like, this is smaller than that. No, this is the, the just the scale-wise you can see here. Look, uh see but you can see like imagine this guy not batman specifically i just grabbed a rag, random action figure mm-hmm. piloting this thing there's... And imagine, oh there's a company uh what's it um 3a they do uh, actually what they do the the max the robots oh, yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that if you had that fused with like marvel legend style versions of those characters i mean that'd be amazing you know yeah. and if anything you could do you don't have to like sell it at target or whatever you could um um, maybe, you know, do like a, you know, like the Masters of the Universe, like a subscription. Yeah, exactly. Like something like well, that. Well, like, yeah, like that's what Super 7 does with Masters of the Universe. So there's ways, um, obviously these are, I think part of why the toy line probably failed is they're probably expensive to produce because there's a lot going on with the mechs. And so I assume like that that's probably even something that's a hindrance today. So if you figure out a way around that, which is like a subscription based thing, something like that, so that would be a way even, to sort of allow that to be possible. Like Super 7, that would be a good Super, that'd be a great one. acquisition. Yeah, like, I know, I'm sure there's, there's all these licensing doing... issues and complex, you know, legal wranglings, but that would be a great and it's, place. I mean, it's a great stores. original property. That yeah, I mean, I think, you know, people our age. No, it's there's like, a there's a collector there's a collector's market for it. I yeah, think. you know, there's there's certainly it's not maybe He Man big. It never was, but it's at least as big as something like Thundercats or something. You know, like I would yeah. say maybe even more so, or at least more beloved because it was just a better cartoon. It was just a really good cartoon. Oh, and, and, a, and another thing I want to bring up is I remember towards the last couple of episodes. There was a period of like reconstruction. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. With the Neo-Sapiens like, and the, they're like learning the humans. To, to work together yeah. again and rebuild society. Oh yeah, in like yeah. the oh. universe, basically. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. I'm getting chills right now just talking about this. But <laughs> yeah. So like again, the, like... the story potential. So I, we just like I laid out my you know the Josiah trilogy, and I have notes somewhere. I would love to be able to find them and share them if I could. Um, they might be at my mom and dad's house or who knows where, but. Um, that is like the next phase because the cartoon there were plans beyond that I think second season where they kind of like had to end it because there was going to be that like what is that other threat out there so you know and the toys themselves they crossed over with Robotech um, oh, at one point they did later in their line to trying to kind of give it some juice so there was rumors that that was what the crossover would be in that third season I don't know if that's true whatsoever I just heard that um, but there's so much possibility that is untapped. I think that's why this line yeah. should be rebooted. Just the untapped potential. It could be big feature movies directed not by Michael Bay. You know, it could be <laughs> something like that. Oh, so, man. Don't so imagine kill. the... <laughs> yeah. Right above me are the Transformers, as I remember them. <laughs> oh. So. That would be so bad. Imagine that, like, all this... <laughs> waiting and then Michael Bay gets exactly. hold of it so that's where we're gonna, like, oh, yeah. so, so that's where we're going to wrap this one up on that note of sad realism that this reboot could go horribly wrong <laughs> as all things could like, what I don't understand is you give it this you know great toy line this great overarching mythology you know and nobody's picking it up you know yeah it will, like, I'm sure will, I wonder like, why it's like that like we'll find out like uh it's one of those things, you know, yeah. it's a great I mean, property, they made a movie of, like, great story. Battleship, you know, like, like the game yeah. Battleship. Well, to be fair, Battleship probably sold more units than, than Exo Squad ever did, but come on, probably. Battleship. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Toy Lines We Think Should Be Rebooted, Brought Back, whatever you want to put it. And we JT are Marsh. telling you, bring back JT Marsh, bring back Exo Squad, bring back JT Marsh's weird lined haircut, Alec DeLeon's, like, mushroom haircut, and the awesome... 
Yeah, and you can do the Neo Sapiens oh, now in really, really cool ways. You know, you know the here's a fun fact. The guy that did JT Marsh's voice, he did the voice of uh, Beast and Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. There you go. I think JT Marsh was also an actor like uh, like Robbie Benson or something, actually. So maybe we're mixing things up. We'll have to look into that and I'll like correct one of us. I'm sure there'll be a comment to <laughs> either Josiah is wrong. These guys are wrong. It'll be like, what the hell? it'll be hashtag Josiah is wrong, hashtag Paul is wrong. One of us is probably wrong. Are we I both know. right? That would be pretty cool, but we're both kind of like, we didn't research this part. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And we'll be back with another toy line very soon. Sweet. Bye, guys.